Hey everyone, the name is Director, and today we're talking ENFPs versus INFPs. How do you tell the difference? How do you know if you're an ENFP or an INFP? Now, the ENFP, that's the lover, that's the archetype of the romantic, the person who believes in big ideals of love and care and nurture of one another, a world where everyone loves and takes care of one another, a world where people speak out for what is right and uh, take care of one another and help one another. The INFP is an archetype of harmony, utopias or ideals, a world where everyone lives by solid ideals and a utopian vision where everybody lives in peace, where everybody takes care of one another, where everybody can have harmony, where everybody understands one another. The ENFP is the archetype of a seeker, somebody that is always looking for something or searching new things, studying up new fields, uh, investigating, finding out the truth behind something, thinking about what's next. The INFP is an archetype of a sage, a person that is constantly thinking about something, grumbling, thinking, soaring, you know, constantly going inside of themselves, trying to figure out life you know to get it why we're here what we're doing what what the point is of everything you know the INFP is the archetype of an advisor or a consultant somebody that seeks to just uh, open up and share their truth with other people the ENFP of an explorer somebody that fundamentally just wants to be free fundamentally just wants to learn, fundamentally just wants to experience life and live life to the fullest. So first things first, toss out all stereotypes you have about extroverts outside of the window. They're not going to help you understand the ENFP personality type. Now, ENFPs, they tend to fall somewhere in the middle. They tend to see themselves as ambiverted rather than extroverted. They tend to say that, yeah, I can like being around people, but I also like my own time. You know, most of all, ENFPs value their freedom. And, you know, around other people, that freedom is constantly under threat. You know, when you're with others, you constantly have to compromise your own freedom and your own ideas for the sake of the group dynamics and the group atmosphere. You can't just do or say whatever is on your mind. You can't go wherever you want to go next. You have to constantly listen to other people and what they want. And this is something the ENFP will struggle with immensely, you know. And this is why a lot of ENFPs are turned off uh, social relationships with other people and having to deal with others, you know, because you feel so easily tied down by other people and so easily forced into conforming and going along with the group even when you don't want to. And a lot of extorted intuitives have this struggle of breaking free of the group and of social dynamics. That said, ENFPs really do care and they really do love other people and they are truly, truly very loving people. They are truly, truly very caring people. They are passionate. They care deeply about other people, not just about other people, but about animals and others. They're very passionate, very loving individuals. One of the first things you will notice is this uh, capacity to love in the ENFP. The ENFP wears their heart on their sleeve. They have feelings. They have feelings that are very easily visible, very easily read. A very, very deep and uh, real individuality and a very personal individuality. Their whole body and their whole facial expression radiates emotion. So it's impossible to avoid the loving and caring side of the ENFP, even though... It is constantly in clash with the free-spirited and freedom-oriented side of the ENFP. The ENFP is a rebel and a rebel that seeks to go their own path. And that of course means, yeah, you cannot just go along with the group and you cannot just say whatever everyone else is doing. You can't really dress like everyone else and be a part of the group like everyone else. No, you are forced to some extent to an outsider role. The ENFP has to wear the brand of the outcast around other people. That means dressing differently, acting differently, standing out just by being who they are. You know, going against the group and the group says, let's go this way. Having another opinion or being the one that says no and has to say no. Being the one that say, says, I don't like this or I don't want to do this. And uh, in so placing yourself as the outsider. The ENFP has to carry this cross of being the rebel 
even if they do care about interpersonal dynamics and want other people to be happy and want other people to love them and appreciate them and uh, connect to them. So the ENFP has an internal conflict between that of, you know, what the group wants and uh, what they want for themselves and who they are and what other people might want or expect of them. So an ENFP has and carries other people's social expectations very close to heart. They're constantly reading other people's emotions and what other people think of them. They're constantly thinking about other people's opinions on them. Do other people like me? Do they dislike me? What do they like about me? What do they dislike about me? These things are all questions that the ENFP carries, you know. And they, they carry this while they are searching and exploring for a new place or going somewhere different. When, Whenever they're out and about and uh, whenever they're planning out their next uh, dream escapade or no matter what they're doing, they're constantly thinking, how will other people perceive me if I do this or say that or go this way or act like that? So they are rebels, but they're socially conscious rebels, you know, the kind of rebel that knows, oh God, now when I'm doing this, other people are going to note this, other people are going to get upset about this, other people are going to feel bad about this. So the ENFP is like the involuntary truth teller, you know, the person that has to say the truth and knows the truth is, must be come out and I must express myself and I must share how I feel and nobody can tell me what not to feel or what not to say. I have to say it and I have to express myself even if it puts me at odds with other people. So sometimes the this can cause the ENFP to, well, realize that, yeah, this is not going to go well. You know, the ENFP is one of those types that can always read where a situation is going to go and they can know if something is going to go a bad turn. They know if something is going to start an argument or if something is going to be bad. But they come to that point of personal self-expression and they reach that artistic side of themselves that says, you have to say it anyways, you have to do it anyways, yeah. This is true, but you have to still proceed. You have to carry on, even though this is going to happen. The INFP comes from a slightly similar, but also slightly different angle. The INFP is, rather than an extroverted intuitive, actually an introverted intuitive in flow. When they're at their best, it's introverted intuition that is guiding them, not extroverted intuition. That means they are working from a mental model to understand the world, they think about things, approach life theoretically, they're existentially inclined, they're not pattern reading, they're not pattern surfing, they're not thinking about connections to others and possible futures, but they're thinking about the world and the universe as a whole and uh, how everything spiritually adds together to one how everything around us is interconnected, how, how we, all, we are all connected, how we are all uh, tied together with some kind of universal spiritual force. The ENFP's approach to the world is uh, focused on spiritual harmony and alignment to other people and balance. You know, the INFP is thinking, okay, uh, am I in balance with the universe? Am I in tune with the world? Am I in flow with the world as a whole, uh, is my flow starting to collide with the universal flow? Is my identity starting to cause conflict or tension or argument with other people? Who am I? What is my place in the world or in the universe? What is it I'm meant to do? What is it that's special about me? The INFP has, in opposition to the ENFP, a very high self-awareness that is reached through introspection. They're constantly questioning and interviewing themselves. Why do I do this? Who am I? What makes me say that? What makes me like this? Why do I do this? Why do I do that? They're constantly questioning themselves in their own taste, you know. Why do I like these people? Why do I wear that? Why do I say this? Why do I talk like that? Why am I, why am I this person? The INFP is very, very strongly self-aware. And they're also aware of their own inner paradoxes and how they contradict themselves constantly. Go against their own words, you know, say things they shouldn't and do things they don't want to. You know, the INFP is the person that looks at themselves 
with a lot of self-awareness and sometimes crippling self-awareness, the kind of self-awareness that keeps you from expressing how you feel and putting yourself out there and sharing with other people what is really going on inside of you. So the INFP is a person that struggles to truly open up about their feelings. You know, they're very private individuals. Their whole world, inner world, is a secret to other people. Nobody knows what's going on, what's happening in there. It's uh, some kind of Alice in Wonderland shit going on right in there, right now. Uh, And the INFP is a dreamer and a person that... uh, lives through a lot of their life in a dream world you know it's fantasy relationships it's imaginative fairy tale stories about themselves it's uh you know all these wacky ideas people they could have talked to friends they could have made you know places they could have visited uh people they could have dated love stories that they could have had adventures they could have gone on you know a lot of dying of peace life happens in here not out there there is no next there is no tomorrow there is no uh, later this week there is no plan you know the ENFPs they have a constant schedule they are thinking about where do it have to be tomorrow where are they going next week what do they want to do after that and you know while there is an openness in the ENFP's calendars and while they're constantly replanning everything and saying, no, maybe that then, and then maybe that then, and then maybe I go this way, or uh, maybe I try that and I have to see how I feel. You know, there is always a plan. There is always a plan in the ENFP's books. Now, the ENFP is uh, the archetype of the seeker. The INFP is the archetype of the thinker or the sage, you know. There is a a hidden intelligence to the INFP that other people, uh, the MBTI, will often completely miss. The INFP is not the... Well, they are sometimes the eccentric, wishy-washy conspiracy theorists that have their minds all flipped up and who believe, uh, you know, in healing water and herbs and all of that. But at the same time, the INFP is a thinker, a deep thinker that is constantly questioning everything. You know, everything is a matter of theoretical discussion. Nothing is certain. Everything is thought about cautiously, carefully for a very long time. You know, people talk about how... Uh, introverted intuition is a gut instinct but no it's not introverted intuition is something carefully developed over a span of one's entire lifetime theories you constantly develop and rework and conceptualize and reconceptualize and synthesize and synthesize and synthesize constantly expand on constantly redevelop constantly add and adjust to be accurate To give accurate predictions and understanding and wisdom about the world and how to live and how to act and breathe and all those things. You know, the INFP's introverted intuition takes a spin towards universal harmony and balance, you know. The question is always, you know, uh, finding a metaphysical experience of things that will bring balance. Finding a theoretical awareness that will... uh, Finding answers that will give balance and give peace and rest to yourself and understanding and perspective you know the of is a perspective hunter they're people that are constantly searching for the other side what do they think what do i think how do they see this and how do i see this and what do i want and what could i want instead and why do i want this you know that of looking at something from multiple different angles Whenever you're stuck on one end, find another angle, another angle, another angle, you know, looking at something from this perspective, that perspective, that perspective, constantly searching for the right way to see and look at something and understand something. The INFP is an introverted feeling type. And that's uh, something that's strongly at their heart, you know. This is what gives the INFP a peaceful nature rather than one of a passionate, fierce warrior or a hero or an adventurer, you know. Uh, The INFP is almost the opposite of such a thing, you know. They live out a lot of their life in their own minds and 
they are almost afraid to speak their feelings and to share what they're really thinking and to really express themselves emotionally. Their emotions are kept at bay. You know, they barely leave it scratch out the, the throat, you know, that their vo voice, their vocals, their way of speaking is typically much more dry, much more slow, much more elaborate, much more cautious. They are the person that is cautiously trying to express their feelings without hurting anybody else and without saying something that will offend anybody and without causing tension or throwing people off or surprising people. You know, the INFP is trying to be gentle with their words and with how they talk, try to be careful with their voice and their words, try to hint and subtly nudge and carefully prod and pry a little bit, you know, ask questions that you hope will get the other person to understand what you're feeling, you know, hint and hope that the other person will get it, say something and hope that other people will understand it. The INFP the INFP is uh, emotionally shy. You know, of course, on some level, we all fear opening up and we all fear being vulnerable and sharing with ourselves, with other people. And that's why we all have our own coping strategies and our shields and our walls. Everyone has walls. Everyone has uh, their own thing, you know. The ENFP... The ENFP is a creature, a free-spirited, uh, wild forest creature, you know, a person that uh, has feelings but never wants to be tied down by their own feelings, has a lot of feelings but never wants their feelings to control them, has uh, a personal story and then never wants the tribe or society to control this story or to keep them off their path. The ENFP and the INFP, they're both rebellious. They're both uh, agents that go against the flow, catalysts, you know, brainstormers, option generators that are constantly thinking outside of the box. But often what the INFP is thinking about is uh, subtle ways to manipulate the flow and to uh, change things and make a small difference. They focus on the small things you can do to make life a little better, you know. The small things you can say and do to make things a little easier for others or to make your own life a little better or the gray, the day, gray day a little bit brighter. The ENFP is uh, much, much more grand scale. I feel often the ENFP is searching and thinking a lot bigger, a lot more intermediate a lot more adaptable their thinking is a lot more focused on the here and now and they are not afraid to be vocal and aggressive and passionate when they speak about what they want and what they care about and they sometimes go towards the scale of dramatism and expressionism making something so big and so real and so important and Wrapping everything in all their emotions and showing the person how important it is and how much you care and how, how bad it is or how difficult it is. Really putting your own struggle out there and showing other people your feelings. And yet, this is where you also notice that both types are strongly individualistic because uh, they're both focused on themselves and they're both, both focused on their feelings, their expression, what they can do. You know, the ENFJ and INFJ, they're archetypes of nurture and care, so their total focus is on giving. But the INFP and the ENFP sees it as... And it sounds a little bit weird, but it's like they are their own greatest gift to the world, you know. There is something that only I can say and only I can do and something that's true, uh, something that's just my truth and I just have to share it and if I do it will make the world a better place. The uh, ENFP and the INFP strongly believes through honesty the world will become a better place. If you can be honest with me and I can be honest with you, that's going to be love. That's going to be a dream come true. The ENFP is the archetype of the enthusiast, the INFP of the deep dweller, the grumbler, the hmm, the huh, uh, I don't know. 
the INFP is the archetype of questions and doubt and the ENFP of uh, potential and opportunity and let's try this and let's go that way and let's check this out. And so only at their worst will you ever see the ENFP waver and say, no, it's impossible. No matter what we do, it's going to suck, you know. It's, we're not getting anywhere. It's not never, nothing is ever happening, you know. We keep on searching and gathering and going, but we don't, we're not getting, getting anywhere. Only at their worst, you see INFPs, you know, uh, lose their calm, lose their cool and become restless and hyperactive and panicked. And, oh God, oh God. <laughs> Uh, suddenly I get the picture of uh, Winnie the Pooh uh, uh, piglet. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> you know, uh, that worry uh, when you lose your cool, lose your head, you know. Uh, INFPs have a very steady head until they don't. ENFPs, they fiercely believe in opportunity until they get cornered too many times. <laughs>